right, so we've got uh, Mary Rodwell coming up here and uh, I get the uh, privilege of introducing her. So let me uh, just quickly read her bio. Uh, it's a super long bio. So I'm, uh, I've only chosen to pick out uh, a couple of paragraphs in here. Uh, so I'll start. Uh, Mary Rodwell is recognized internationally as one of Australia's leading researchers and writers in the UFO and contact phenomenon areas. Mary is an author of highly acclaimed book, Awakening, How Extraterrestrial Contact Can Trans Transform Your Life 2002, the producer of EBE award-winning documentaries, Expression of ET Contact, A Visual Blueprint 2000, and Expression of ET Contact, A Communication and Healing Blueprint 2004, her new book, The New Human, which describes and documents star children, is released in late 2016. Mary has researched more than 3,000 cases and suggests extraterrestrial encounters are a global phenomenon, and this is evident in the new humans referred to as star children. Many affirm that star children exhibit a maturity and wisdom beyond their years and have an awareness and connection to spiritual realms. Indigos, or crystal children, as they are also known, have telepathic abilities and spiritually awakened and can describe many species of non-human visitors with a feeling that they are as real to them as their real family because they feel supported by them. Uh, welcome, Mary Rodwell. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, this is the first time, uh, you know, I've got to, uh, you know, see you or speak with you. I've seen you at uh, the Our Alien Ancestry conferences a couple of times and uh, you know, I watched your uh, YouTube channel. Uh, a lot of videos, I've seen lots of your interviews and uh, some uh, really, really, really great stuff. Uh, so uh, thank you for all your work and uh, I will uh, pass the, uh, the, the speaking baton over to you. You're muted, Mary. Here we go. Um, thank you so much. And again, it was pleasure to see Michael and hear him speaking. As, as I said, um, one of his books, I did the forward. I'd like to do um, a, a PowerPoint presentation because I feel for me, um, activation of humanity, we're on, the, we are talking about the portal to ascension, which is really the activation of humanity evolving into our higher awareness and our true nature as Michael was talking very clearly about how important sound and frequency are. So I'm going to give you a taste of some of the sound and frequency that is activating humanity in terms of how I understand it. So let's, let's do this. Okay, now let's, here we go. So we're talking about activation of humanity. I, talk, I mentioned triggers of consciousness uh, because this is what I believe is happening now. We are um, being bombarded with a whole host of frequencies from the solar system that are a part of this activation. But also we are um, finding that those that are waking up are spreading these frequencies to all of the, to everyone around them that is ready to wake up. And it comes through in one way through art. And this, this is a beautiful representation from Lloyd Canning, who is an English painter who also did the cover of my book. Here he's showing you very clearly his understanding as an experiencer, um, someone who'd seen the craft, that we have been visited by what was known as the gods, um, which in modern vernacular are, are non-human intelligences, the family, um, here you can see from this beautiful painting how we have gone through this interaction all through human history. And what does it, ha what happens as we wake up? Our paradigm is shattered as he puts, as you can see in this beautiful image here. And as it's shattered, it shatters through many different um, ways. Through a sighting of a craft that you know um, for, for many is the um, seminal point of them waking up to the fact that we're not alone. They may have afterwards downloads of information or communication with these intelligences. They may also remember uh, past life connections with the ancestors. And I've done many past life regressions where 
they have found in their past, even as human, they've interacted with these beings. Music is frequency. Again, many will be downloading the frequencies for activation, and I'm going to give you an example of that. Artwork is another one, as you can see, very powerful, activating our per perceptions. Scripts and symbols come through after this activation. Light languages, star languages, universal languages, they're called. Healing frequencies can often be an activation. You have energy work and this wakes up and, and activates more of your dormant DNA. Some will channel telepathic communications. Sacred sites have a frequency that can be activating, um, such as Stonehenge and Michael uh, Freeney talked about the importance of frequency in, in the very stones that contain that, that frequency. Crop circles, the same. Um, shamanic encounters, near-death experiences, and hypnosis can be activating by, by the su subconscious, superconscious, opening you up to more of your reality. And again, this artwork is very powerful. Lloyd Canning's experience started when in 2004, what he said could only be described as a spaceship went over his van. He saw the entire undercarriage, which was metal. It was silent. It was one of the scariest things. And he tried to scream, he said, but nothing came out. Many are activated ultimately through some kind of experience and it can be fearful. It can be scary. But the analogy is to become the shaman, to have your shamanic wake up call. Often we have to transcend our human fears before we can operate multidimensionally, just like the shaman has to do when they operate in a multidimensional reality. They have to overcome their human fears. So where do we start? We start with the, the, the fact that what is our DNA really? What does it hold for us as we um, understand there's more to our DNA? And I've, you know, I can only briefly explain a little bit in this, this short time. Is there DNA evidence we're designed a human species? Dr. Francis Crick says this, for life to form by chance is mathematically virtually impossible. The immensity of complex coded and precisely sequenced information is staggering. The DNA evidence speaks of intelligent information bearing design. And then he says, they program the molecules so that when we reached a certain level of intelligence, we would be able to access their information that they could therefore teach us about ourselves. So who are they? Are we talking about these higher intelligences that have been on this planet all through history? But what else is it that we need to be aware of? That we've reached a level now of intelligence and awareness, we are seeing the evidence that we are a design species. Dr. Lena Olson, a molecular biologist, is also um, an experiencer, and she had a download which explained it to her. Human DNA has the ability to transform. The information of the donors and their background is there a hidden key and like PC programmers they hide their work. The key can be activated. The programmers know when the person is ready to be contacted. The activated ones spread a signal to wake others up. I feel they are speeding this up. So this is, this is what we're talking about. This is the portal to the ascension of the human race. Are they speeding it up? Certainly the evidence seems to be there. Another wonderful um, ascension art by Lord Canning, which says it beautifully. So what does quantum reality or multidimensionality mean? Expanded senses. I believe the true nature of human consciousness and where we're headed. Perceiving spirits, non-human entities, orbs, energy fields, having out of body experiences and astral traveling, healing experiences and healing abilities, heightened intention, information, knowledge, downloads, heightened multidimensional senses such as telepathy, clairvoyance, clairaudience, et cetera, past life recall on earth and other planetary systems and other dimensions. Telekinesis, te telekinesis moving objects with the mind, expressions of ET contact, scripts, artwork, star light languages, music frequencies. 
the ability to affect both matter and mind influencing and remote sensing, etc. are all these expanded abilities that many after they have had an activation or awakening will find these are part of their experience, some if not all. Activation. So here we have Nikola Tesla saying it very clearly that our entire biological system and the brain and the earth itself work on the same frequencies. So as the, the planet, our planet is being activated um, through these frequencies from the central sun. So we are picking up those frequencies. So these are all the ways that we are being activated, including the orbs that many people see now and taking photographs of. Um, some see them physically, some don't see them physically, but it, it, they are part of this activation. And we always believe that, or many people believe that your encounters may be with a, um, a form, uh, some humanoid form of some type. Well, many are activated by these intelligences in the Merkaba or the, the orb of light, which is our consciousness. And many, when they travel out of body, will be in this form. And I'm going to give you an example of that right now. Jimmy Jones, um, retired captain um, in the US Army, he actually had an encounter with a ball of light. And I'm going to let you hear how he explains it himself. Uh, I can't describe the, the beauty that was coming off of this light. I was like, what is that beauty, that blue light, right? That was sitting nestled in between two hills. And Vanessa was the first one that pointed it out. She was the first one to see it. And um, our, our exit our, it was a mountain exit, exit 264. And it actually backtracked back to the blue light after we got off the interstate. And as we passed uh, uh, that blue light, I heard something say, and I was driving, I heard something say, here he comes. I heard plain as day, right? Like telepathically, here he comes. And I, and I turned to Vanessa and I said, did you hear that? And immediately after, I can, the best way I can describe it is that we went through like a time wave, just like a wall, and it slowed down, a wobble, yeah, so I was just a... a it's just like a microsecond of, you know, and then back into normal. And we were driving along, and I went right back to the house. And I told Vanessa, I said, Vanessa, you know, we got back, we were going lay in bed. And I said, Vanessa, I think that light did something to me, right? And sure enough, <laughs> and uh, I'm not trying to be too dramatic, I'm just dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a southern kid, so I'm really a little dramatic. <laughs> so, but yeah, but um, we got back in, and and we had a, a beam of blue light in our bedroom, a beam of light coming from space, shot into our bedroom. And I looked over at Vanessa. We we just got in bed, and I said, "Did you see that?" And she said, "Yes." And as soon as she said yes, a second beam came through from space. Definitely, we have a beautiful view of heavens. Beautiful view of heavens. Here, nice big picture windows, and it came, and it came through. Then an orb of uh, electromagnetic a ball, like a yeah, like an electromagnetic orb, a ball of lightning, right? Manifested in a corner outside of our bedroom, but the wall disappeared, and we could see this. Ball of orb light, you know, this this an orb of lightning just sitting like a star, right? Just like a star. <sighs> Excuse me. And that How crazy, right? All the world. <sighs> Profound for Jimmy, and since then he's had multiple experiences and downloads from that time, as many do. The blue orb, um, Jimmy spoke to it and asked, and are you all light? And it said, yes. The light poured into my mind. I understood we've entered the Aquarian age. I understood Hindu cycles of time are correct. God is literally light and has appeared in all cultures um, throughout endless cycles of time. The world is eternal and has always existed. I understood why all ancient cultures worship the sun 
and oriented their tab, uh, temple complexes with Orion. I understood what we see on Earth is the remnants of countless cycles. And this is the profound change. When people say to me, what's the evidence of contact? There is your evidence right there. Total change in the paradigm, understanding, awareness, focus, and truth. Here we have um, more of what is part of this light intelligence that is our connection, because we're talking not just about physical entities here, we're talking about non-physical ones interacting with us, interdimensional, extra-dimensional, trans-dimensional, beings from our future. And as uh, Jimmy says here, light is consciousness, the world is a fractal of light. DNA upgrades are via light. He says, I know what Tesla knew. Strange things have continually occurred since this event, such as lights flickering, bells ringing, a tornado of physical orbs appearing in his home. And here you see the orbs again, and these strange frequencies that um, as you slow up the video, you can actually see the frequencies held within the orb. And I have many, um, many videos of, of that where it shows the frequencies. So DNA is changed by frequency. I bring this through in my hands, my voice, and through the light language I use, Dr. Marie Batchelor who had an activation in an Indian temple some years ago. And from that time now, she calls herself a DNA galactic rewirer. That's what she's doing. DNA upgrades and activation, she says, to a galactic connection she has. This is quantum reality, it's science. I'm aware I'm getting into the DNA and it's subatomic. DNA is changed by frequency. And this is how she explains her journey. And what she has now been doing, she calls herself now a shamanic MD. Hold on. I don't know why it doesn't want to move. Why are we not working? If it doesn't go through, maybe just close out of it and start it again. Oh, hold on. Oh, I'm going, I've got, we're, I'll go back. Um, sorry about that. Uh, here we are. Okay, here we go. I want now to help you to um, have a bit of an idea of something that is manifesting through many hundreds of people now, the star language, not just with adults, but with children. And these are two teenagers that um, were kind enough to be in The New Human, but I also, um, Carolyn Corey, in her wonderful documentary, ET Contact, They Are Here, has them explain their frequencies, um, their star language. Sua set eleaka, e suluun tuk ewe, elo amana e sala am at elo, ala onkis susum ma etala, elo lo tuiki shisea, elo at sa o saetam mana e gu, e gulea te su shese. Eo mono tu ki awa, art et sunum et tu, et ula at et ula akit sesa, e sesa la tu shesam. It doesn't exactly translate into English. The key to this language is that it's not transmitting data verbally through the mind, it's transmitting images through the voice. And dolphins do the same thing. Dolphins can transmit pictures to each other of what they're seeing through sonar. There have been times where I have spoken a language that is very representative of a particular civilization or a particular group of beings. And when I would speak it, they would be there on the other side, listening and, and sending back information. Can you give a message that you mm -hmm. feel is important in the star mm -hmm. language? Mm -hmm. That's even okay. All right. I'll try, I'll try this, okay? And a daughter had reacted to some of the star languages that I she'd seen on YouTube. 
And the daughter said, but I can speak those languages too. And she said to her mother, I, you know, there's three of them, but one of them heals water. When I speak at water, I can purify the water. And the mother told me that the water actually tasted differently. So we are seeing here something very significant, that these frequencies have a power. And what is important about that is what, what is actually happening. And certainly part of it seems to be that those listening to those frequencies are shifted or changed. I always recall a presentation I did many years ago and a, a nurse came up to me after I'd shown some of this information and she said, Mary, while I was hearing those languages, I suddenly started to write a strange script. And she uh, showed me the script that suddenly was manifesting just after she heard the languages. Here is an eight-year-old speaking a language. So we've got frequencies coming through the star language, light languages or universal languages, what, whatever way you want to interpret them. But what was interesting about this young man who lives in Australia, he is, was 11 when this happened to him. He had an experience with these beings that he's drawn here and his dream on the spaceship and the music that he downloaded. Matthew was sleeping when this being came to him. He felt they were good. They were short, light gray, big head, slit for a mouth big black eyes. He saw himself lifted to the ceiling before hitting the ceiling he blacked out. He awoke in a dome shaped uh, ship to see the beings around a control panel type desk where they were communicating in another language telepathically, which he also could hear. He focused on the control panel, which seemed to make sounds he felt were altering his DNA. This became, um, and what um, this sound became the first of five songs called Decoding the Human DNA. They were completed within three days. He downloaded them and his mother recorded them. I'm going to play a little bit of that particular um, Decoding DNA music that he, um, he played. He channeled them from these intelligences at no time did Matt Matthew practice them. He named each song before playing it as though he knew what was coming next. And he said, these songs I need to give to people to wake them up. It's about shifting our DNA. I felt it was always the same energy and a good feeling. So here we go. <laughs> fascinating when this happened is that I was already in contact with Juliana Oka who lives in California who is the most amazing violinist a celebrated violinist as well as an artist and I sent this to her because her story one life many worlds she has uh, had experience similar to Matthew and she says this when she was taken over by the entity, I felt something similar, she said, to what Matthew experienced. Amazing power at the time, I, um, but she said, but afterwards was crashed, um, was drained and crashed afterwards, as he also explained that he was exhausted after he had produced them. Definitely he's con contacted by extraterrestrials or master musical spirits. My extraterrestrial experiences happened also in childhood and went far beyond. But she said, it's amazing composition, genius. I liked the music a lot. 
I believe, believe Matthew is being helped by master extraterrestrial spirits. And it's really important. I have been fortunate to be able to look at similar experiences because it is showing that we are really, um, it's, this is not just a cultural thing because Juliana is actually Japanese and this is a cross-cultural phenomena. Here she is playing her violin and this is an image of her otherworldly teacher. And she said, this male angelic being flew in front of me. He had long hair and soft shining golden gown. He played violin flying and dancing in the air. And he showed me techniques that were not usual for the violin. So the angelic violinist directed her path. So she was shown a new way to play the violin with movement as well as sound, which obviously was a new kind of energy that was conveyed through her music. This is some of her artwork and she found she could paint. No one taught her. Um, she said um, this was fascinating for her. She's produced the most beautiful artwork um, and also um, is now become a, a, a celebrated artist as well. But none of this was actually taught to her. It was something that she found she could do. And I'm going to give, show you more evidence of that in a minute. So why is sound so important? Are we at interacting with intelligences? Um, what is going on here? Certain musical patterns can create amazing, perfect resonance when the right spirit is infused into the musical soundscape. And this happened, this particular experience that I was exposed to happened you know, in 2000. Um, and the young man, Darren, who is part of Sacred Resonance, um, explained to me how he understood this went on. To explain the story, he was uh, going to play some sacred music in, um, at th this conference. And he, he said this, music is how we create the paraphysical doorways to higher evolution. The higher intelligence has left humanity with musical cues, the frequency patterns encoded in ancient temples so we can use them to create a positive contact culture. Darren gave a musical performance using sacred Hebrew words demonstrating sacred language can create a portal to connect with these intelligences. And I'm gonna show you what happened as he played this music and what happened in the room, which we um, took with a digital camera. And you will see for yourself what, what actually happened. So I'll start with the music first and you can hear what was played.
look at the room. These were taken in sequence as Darren was playing. We have here this really strange shift in the room with light and these strange spirals of light. Even the image on the, on the um, screen is shifted. Then it shifts even more to this wonderful stream of light straight over, you can barely see Darren. Then we have two streams of light. So what is the stream of light? I've got a picture here that was quite amazing for me, um, where a beautiful young lady was in my home and we were taking some pictures which she wanted to take back with her. And somehow or other, something else seemed to decide to be in the photograph. So what is that light? Ribbons of light. This is Josh uh, um, talking about his interaction with ribbons of light. I astrally visited the large ship with many other souls. There was a huge variety of beings. They were playful and incredibly wise and were able to shift their form at will from a humanoid shape to a ribbon of light. As I saw them, they seemed to be composed of effervescent bubbles of energy. So what we're all, I believe, being exposed to is how frequency can change our experience on, on this reality through certain frequencies. Again, this is right across cultures. Um, this was sent to me some years ago now, a, a link to a very interesting experience, a bit similar to Matthew in a sense, because she had this experience where she was um, dreaming of a person playing some kind of instrument in the clouds, the name of the music, please welcome my friend. When she awoke, she wanted to play the piano, but didn't have one. At a friend's home was surprised she could play the piano by hammering this unusual way. The music is like Chinese ancient style, I was told, and they believe the music came from the sky. And I'll just show you how, how unusual this is, if I can get it to play. <laughs> it's not wanting to do this again. Uh, hold on, I'm gonna have to go back again. Uh, it's not gonna, there we go, let's try now, here we go. Come on, it doesn't want to do this for me, come on, no. <laughs> Please excuse my computer doesn't like the frequencies. Um, that's all I can say. Uh, I'll try and move it and then move back again. Doesn't want to do it. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? Doesn't like it. I'm going to go back and see if I can uh, go back to that. No, I'll see if I can come back to it later. I'm sorry about this. It seems my computer isn't happy with me. Let's see if this one, this is a female farmer who also speaks the light languages. And I'm hoping that this will show you as well. See if she'll show up. Nope, they're not letting me show you this either. Um, oh, here we go. Anything这幅画是一笔画呢还是不是一笔画what is happening with many is this spontaneous imagery, scripts, um, language, uh, symbols are being manifested across the globe. And this particular lady who also speaks light language said that she suddenly began to speak and paint with universal language. She'd never painted prior to this. 
her painting, and some of them are really deeply um, complex, she said um, she never took the pen off the paper. And I'm going to see if I can be lucky enough to get this to work now. No, it's not letting me do it. It is playing up quite nicely. Oh, there we go. see the streams of light that were happening at the same time and also orbs manifesting at the same time as well. So what is going on, as many want to know and understand, what is going on with all of this? And Tracy Taylor explains it, who's an experienced artist who I've mentioned many times, she's in both my books, um, who manifested some amazing artwork many years ago and that was what intrigued me was why, what is this that's being manifested? And Tracy calls it hypercommunication. It should be borne in mind that the nature of extraterrestrial communication, that in a majority of instances, star visitors communicate with humans by telepathic transfer of mental images and concepts rather than by words and speech. Everything's made up of the same matter resonating at different harmonics so the extraterrestrials are able to communicate with us directing thought on subatomic levels and so activate human subconscious the symbols are meant to communicate the nature of the macrochism and here we have it many many of those having encounters and experiences with these intelligences are manifesting some amazing artwork and symbols this one is particularly from Antonio. You saw him in the video, um, ET Contact is, is here. He actually has done enormous number of these where you get, you've got the script here, and these are all about activating um, forms of communicating volumes of information. Tracy Taylor says that a symbol and script are the ancient forms of communicating volumes of information without having to read pages and pages. And also mentions her understanding of the light language. This language is more an accurate representation of an individual soul vibration. It means that the language comes directly from the universal mind or God, which ultimately links all of existence together. It bypasses linear space time. It's one of the steps from words to telepathic communication, which is where I believe we are going. Here is another wonderful image from Antonio, who is um, who calls himself an Arcturian ambassador. Um, he explains here, um, I'm going to play a little bit of what he calls the Arcturian language. Sumatakapa <laughs> Or ticket, sing at that, hope at Rocket in Scopact in Han, it's a bird scorper in Scopact, Dick Scomatic, sing at a cut, so great skirt, Unitits, Rimna, Unity, Sumba, Rocket, the Capalitzer, Santa, the Capritzit, Sumber, the Tecnic. So here we have, I believe, many 
not just hundreds or thousands, possibly millions of individuals that at some point are manifesting these frequencies, which are part of their energetic field. But we also find, as Matthew did, that he had some form of healing on board craft. This is Dr. Olson's experience of the mantid, when she asked a really important and vital question, given her profession. She asked this. She was prompted by a mantid, mantid being after a healing experience. She asked for guidance to know if she was on track and if she should come out to give her a sign. She suffered with a severe dislocation of her atlas vertebra, causing extreme discomfort. The vertebra rotated by itself into the correct position. She could now swallow without pain. She called this her sign, and so she's coming out as promised. I know it's important for me to stay alive, evolving, developing my abilities, because I feel great changes are coming in my lifetime. So from that, you know, this is what, when I'm asked about disclosure and how it's going to happen. I believe disclosure is going to come from every one of you listening to this presentation. Disclosure will come with you owning your truth, owning your experience, so we can change the understanding of our reality. And so we can break out of our 3D, limited, limiting, inaccurate reality. And I'm going to explain a little bit more about this little video was put together and and what it really is is explaining about um the what what we call the light the um soul swap um is, is one of the names of it or walk-in because this is another uh, area that seems to have been caught um been experience of many many people also that at some point during their life, one soul has left and another's come in with a task. And this is a really classic one. Uh, um, Casa is a young uh, a, a mother of four children, um, born in Hong Kong, now lives in Australia. And her experience is, is very fascinating that she was told by doctors um, some years ago with an autoimmune disease that she would actually no longer survive um, after a few months and was sent home really to die. She was visited by angelic beings, experienced a bright light and symbols coming into her and felt amazing love. From that time she was healed. The light beings now guide her as to what she, she eats to how she lives. She now does a healing, she says, with a force inside her which guides her movements and voice. The soul swap after happened later after numerous near-death experiences from her last pregnancy and she believes her soul now is from the 13th dimension that she is a consciousness she has no form has no need as a 13th dimensional being to eat but she came in, into our reality as she understands it to help with this process of activating um, a humanity and a healing oops hold on I'm going, and uh, her healing um, is, exp uh, is through frequency and language as well. She's had two children um, that one refused to eat, only drank milk until he was four years old because he told her telepathically human food was not good for him. He never gets sick and he's learning how to be human. <laughs> I've got other videos that I will show in a more expanded version of this um, in future events, but I've only got a short time left so I can't show you more evidence of how this is done by um, by many of those having experiences both those that see themselves as dual consciousness or see themselves as hybrids or see themselves as um, uh, walk-ins or show, uh, soul swaps these are all new concepts that are now being uh, honored finally this is how many people are describing themselves. 
this healing encounter um, was created um, the video by Daniel Vernon burden which I'm very grateful for this is a Dr Lena Olson explaining about an experience she had in a bedroom with a small being who um, operated or, or did a frequency of healing with her she explains that um, how she experienced it from a, a, a perspective of watching what he was doing to her body I woke up staring right into the lower body of a small being I raised my head and upper body from the bed and leaned my head into my right hand. Immediately, I focused my eyes on places in the room and wondered what this being looked like. Myself down into my body. When I was back and in control of my body, I leaned forward towards the being. He was still standing, healing me with his eyes shut and I could see the soft glow from the fabric in his suit and every fiber in it. So healing, we found on the research that we did with the Dr. Edgar Mitchell Free Foundation that with 4,200 individuals that filled the questionnaire, 600 questions plus, that nearly 50% of those that had encounters, had healing experiences with non-human intelligences. So what are the scripts? Um, the information I've received is that just one symbol contain, can contain enough information to fill a room with encyclopedias. So what is it that these children are doing at this young age, writing these symbols on, on their body? Scripts are important. The children are drawing these symbols a five-year-old wrote the script and the mother said it was to help me understand is what he said to her. Another four-year-old didn't know what it said, but said it means something, something important. You have a three-year-old here from the UK um, with this particular script, although he's no longer three. And this is what he explained as an adult. Three times a week, I'd be woken up by a glow, a woman. Um, with long blonde hair and green eyes. No beam me up Scotty, we would be in a room. Walls metallic, when touched, rippled like water. A window like a plasma screen showed stars, nebula, and symbols when put in the correct order would show me things. This is the experience when he was three. Many forms of script are being manifested. And this one was by Martin Law, a musician in Ireland. And he wrote to me some years ago now and sent me some examples of his script. I was just studying hieroglyphics, established at what, uh, astonished at what I've done. I mean, the characters are totally consistent throughout, not, uh, not only flawless, but to my senses written with a bold confidence and authenticity of a piece of Zen calligraphy. To be honest, I haven't a clue what I've written, but I do know when I write only one character wrong and I throw it on the fire and start over. I do not how I know how I do it. This is how this can shift, these frequencies can shift. And this wonderful gentleman, a good friend of mine, Peter Smith, he's a hypnotherapist and author of Quantum Consciousness, Journey Through Other Realms, is director of the Newton Legacy of the Michael Newton Institute. Um, the uh, Dr. Michael Newton wrote Journey of Souls, um, Destiny of Souls, where he regressed people in between lives, many thousands in between lives. Um, Peter and I have connected a number of times. This photograph is when we were in Nevada. And this is how he explained an experience to him um, that happened to him after our connection. Again, I believe this is due to the fact that once we are exposed to certain frequencies, we all carry them. It's not just unique to me, it's unique to anyone who is opening up to these um, frequencies, I believe. And he said this, even though I easily access other realms of consciousness, I needed some kind of activation and feel you did this either with your presentation or company. I came home and four weeks later, the blue painting arrived piece by piece, sometimes in the early hours of the morning. As soon as I looked at it, I could not believe it had happened. It was the second time I picked up a brush. And there you see this, this um, wonderful painting um, that Peter manifested. And here is another one he manifested. And I actually saw, saw in this and I explained it to him that I could see lots of different beings 
in this particular one as well. The red picture was activated by reading The New Human. I got out of the way again and surrendered to something greater than myself. I sort of, I was sort of told what colors to use, where the dots go, sometimes particles, sometimes waves. I've been told I must mix the paint first in a circular motion to bring consciousness to it. I reflected on the echoes of Aboriginal art and I sensed that we paint from the same source. So this is how it can happen. It is spontaneous, it is intuitive, it's a feeling, it's a knowing, it's an awareness. Talking with the watchers is this image by Lloyd Canning. Again, these are, I believe, activating images and the experiencer is bringing them through in a multitude of ways. This one um, is a, a lovely story. Um, E.T. is an artist, Faye Vale is, uh, lives in Glastonbury. I met her some years ago when I spoke in Glastonbury at the symposium there. And she, we met up later and she took me to our home and showed me some of her amazing pictures and artwork that were downloaded from the beings. And I've got to keep an eye on the time, okay. She says this, I feel many images are from Andromeda. I've had star people from Neptune or ether as they call it, small planets around Saturn, from areas around the moon, which I feel I come from. I have an overwhelming fascination and attachment to Sirius. There is a collective called the Wise Ones. These are from many star systems that come together as a council to promote growth and law in the universe. These are the star gods. They were my first contacts and first to give me information and images. I feel their presence in as much of what I'm given and we both have an amazing trust. I know I'm protected, valued um, from various, ET, uh, various ETs as well as communication. Um, the lower images past civilizations on earth such as the Egyptians. Her book, ET as an artist. What was fascinating and you'll see how similar this is that when I went to America and in New York met Linnea Dalmas, a hypnotherapist who produces this art, which is so similar in style to Faye that I can't help but connect them. Does it mean they are downloads from the same source of intelligence? Maybe so, and it certainly suggests that. Other artwork, and I've got to, I'm gonna have to rush through this a little bit now. Um, some of the artwork produced by Cecily Kohilikan is contact art. She has downloaded over a hundred or more images, like a thesis, she said, it opened her mind to biology, neurology, physics, astronomy, astrophysics, theology, philosophy, spirituality, technology, anthropology, and archeology. span She feels she's in a school of higher intelligence they're teaching her. It forced me to read and learn what they suggested. It awakened me to higher consciousness. She learned to see life differently, how everything is interconnected by a mathematical order, balance and harmony that flows within us. The art progressed, um, telling her something that she was not aware of. It took 10 years to realize that specific information was being relayed to me through this art making process. And we have here um, more of the art, Tracy Taylor's art. Some of these black and white images were literally curated in 10 minutes without any ruler and they all fitted together. What this particular Australian artist um, noticed when she looked at this artwork, Lorraine Joy Burke, who's an artist in her own right, said, it's amazing. I'm going somewhere else, a portal entrance. It's like I'm not here. I'm between both places at the same time. An ability to go and be with them. Leonardo da Vinci created the same portal. They're working with me through the pictures. The matrix, it's downloading, it's downloading people to people's subconscious. She said they're full of compassion, just like us, we are they. So this is how we're connecting on multiple creative levels. This is another one, and I'm going to have to, I think I've got another five minutes, so I'm going to try yeah, and get through you're this. Good, Mary. If, you, if you go over a few minutes more, that's fine. Take your time to oh. close out however you want. Thank you. Thank you, Neil. <clears throat> this is what happened to a psychotherapist experiencer in England when he saw the artwork. And this is what was traumatizing to him, not that so much the awakening to his connection to these beings, but what this artwork did for him. And I had a whole, um, when he looked at it, 
he was traumatized. This is what he said. When I saw Tracy's art to begin with, I was traumatized. I felt sick, almost like I had a nervous breakdown. It knocked me off my feet, metaphysically, spiritually, an internal implosion, like a light going on, switches pulled, flashbacks, experience I sensed and understood something I shouldn't have had knowledge of, awakening spiritually. Since being a child, I had forgotten and something I had been trained to do. That is really significant. Where did he get the training? And I believe like many of the children and adults that remember going to space schools and being taught certain um, abilities and awareness. He said this, I was able to sense and switch on a channel and use my hand as a barcode reader scanner with the third eye to receive equivalent of several hundred terabytes and uploaded them and uplink it knocked me backwards. I felt like I'd been hit by a lightning strike, information and data at light speed. A couple of days I spent um, with Terry helping him to integrate a little bit, but it actually took him nearly a year to feel comfortable and understand what was going on. He said this, he understood on multiple levels what it meant, what his potential was for humanity, group consciousness, interpreting codes, ciphers, signs, forms, geometric formula, blueprints, design models, encryptions, meta languages, hieroglyphics, schematics, an internal Rosetta Stone, he said, was turned on, an intergalactic process. I could understand on conscious and superconscious level something I'd been trained to do. I was a code breaker, able to interpret encrypted codes received and downloaded. He said, I don't know where it comes from. It's activated by the artwork. I'm able to understand and do something with it. And in fact, that's exactly how he is working with it now as a, a shamanic code breaker. So where else are we getting these frequencies? Many of you may have visited the crop circles. I certainly have. And it is incredible what can be felt and experienced in crop circles. And the Syrians say that entering the crop circles affects the DNA in the same way as Masaru Emoto explains in Messages in Water. So remember we're what, 78% water. We're getting the frequencies, the programming through visiting energy centers, such as the crop circles, for example is one of them. And many have noticed amazing awakening changes by visiting the crop circles. And remember, these are all over the world, not just in England. Um, here in Australia, when I did crop circles and contact many years ago, I learned of at least 150 crop circles in Australia. And that's the only ones we know about because many of the farmers don't um, talk about this. Communication script from the light beings under hypnosis with Mike Oram author of Does It Rain in Other Dimensions, an experience in England when he was in hypnosis. There were the, that was the script that he produced in hypnosis. We of course are getting script in many of the crop circles as well. Space school, I learn more on the ships than I do at school. Aiden at five years old explained they float, not walk and become invisible. There are blue ones too, I've seen them in my mind's eye. Children taught by special friends. Um, Samantha Mowat in, in Canada said her three-year-old son complained one morning, mommy, I don't want to go to school. I already went to school. I was at school with my special friends. She asked him where he was at school. He said, today, nighttime, I've got back now. I asked him, she said, what school looked like? And he said, he had a small class and the boy teaching them, the boy had really big black eyes and white clothes. What is taught is complex. This is something from um, Serena Seren in Spain, scientific downloads, and I'll very briefly, some of them are really complex. The structure of the universe, reality, um, the importance of geometric constants, why geometry in the universe, its deep logical spiritual meanings, the nature of particle physics, et cetera, et cetera. Um, space, energy, and frequently, uh, frequency, psychology, of star children. I was told by an eight-year-old who was explaining being at a, uh, one of these space schools with his school friends. And I said to him, you know, what are you taught? And he said, Mary, it's very complex. So I said to him, can you tell me some of the, com the, the complex uh, things you've been taught? And he said quite bluntly, 
no, it's too complex for you. So I was certainly shot down in flames there. I'm looking at the time, so I'm going to just try and briefly show you here. 15 years old, um, this is Maureen Marina, who mentioned that she'd been at, um, at space school learning all those complex uh, information. She said she remembered her contact as a star seed. Um, there was an expansion of her abilities. She was taught uh, she could see others and perceive others' thoughts after this, their energy and their genetics, their connection to star systems. She could see auras and spirits, manip manipulate space time and magnetic fields. She has healing hands. Um, she said she channels information and visits the spacecraft. And she found out that she was a hybrid at 15 years old. She said it was encoded in her DNA. So evidence the sun produces charged particles to affect humanity. Mitch Batras mentions this in Solar Rain. Solar cycle 24 has begun. The sun's activity is 50% stronger than cycle 23. This wave affects not only the planet, but the human body's magnetic field and human emotions. Batras believes the magnetic influence of the sun will usher in what's described by our ancient ancestors as the transition, bringing a new state of being. To be a hybrid is to be awakened. Hybrids are expressing their consciousness through their DNA. The hybrids are part of the new human archetype we're evolving into. The labels don't matter, humans are evolving. Our DNA is advancing and we will express that in any way possible. And it's contained in our DNA. This is scalar imprinted memories of all other beings in our DNA has passed through. We can express it in the new human. We express it in hybrid forms such as indigo, crystal, etc. That's the energy we're expressing or perceiving through our reality lens and what we are emitting. It's all in interconnected. Zach mentions this in The New Human in detail. Here we have the new human with true con accounts of contact. I have met right across the spectrum, not all cultures, but all belief systems, all professions are now sharing their experiences. It is the activated ones coming out of the space closet. There's disclosure now happening from the ground up. So there will be a change of consciousness. Mike Oram, who I mentioned, did the images of the script. Um, he said to his mother at four years old, there will be a change in human consciousness. The energy is heading this way and the essence of this energy is light. The energy will repair our DNA. It will make us complete and who we really are. This was what he's trying to tell his mother at four years old, and this was in the 1950s. We have children focusing on love. This five-year-old, his mother said, never taught him meditation. He, on his own initiative, placed a pyramid and crystals in a configuration in front of him. He said each corner of the pyramid represented specific feelings. He placed a clear quartz crystal bead on the point of the pyramid and said it represents love. This is what he was focusing on. So we are transitioning uh, and we are literally the next step. I, um, this is Lee Capitelli, who's, who is a wonderful young lady in Australia. And she believes she's a homo novice. And she said, they are trying to wake up humanity through drawings, music, sacred sites, all born after 2000 and 2001 are homo noeticus. They are literally, she said, the next step. Compared the new human is this you and your children, because it is intergenerational. Human beings have no idea how amazing they are, but they have to believe it first. Kathy was nine years old when she actually said this. And here we have a wonderful image, existence and activation by, uh, of humanity. This is what is now the energy and the frequency and frequencies that are coming to humanity from the planet, our planet, from the solar system, from the central sun, from all these new, advanced, aware, upgraded generations of human that are bringing in the frequencies that are assisting the rest of the older models, as I call myself, to wake up and to understand our potential, who we are, and how I believe we are now being prepared to connect to our true family, our star family, 
and become part of the cosmic community. Thank you.